Welcome back to the channel. We're going to continue working on our 2012 Lexus IS250. Last time we took it all apart, put a little pull on it just so we could get the rest of our parts that were smashed in there out of there. Now we're going to continue our pulls, get everything squared up where it belongs, and start cutting off the bad stuff so we can replace it. Let's jump into it. So we'll start our pull by using the bumper reinforcement. Now these are not meant for pulling, they're meant for absorbing energy in an accident. So I don't know how far we're going to be able to go with it, but we'll give it a shot because it's easy and it's there. So we just wrap the chain around it and we're going to pull it. We're also going to watch to make sure we're not tearing anything. And we're not really moving a whole lot. The rail's pretty buckled. So we're gonna give up and move it around. And you can see what it was doing to the reinforcement. It was gonna pull those bolts through and launch the chain across the shop, which is not safe. And you know I'm all about safety. So we're gonna redirect our efforts from trying to straighten the rail to trying to remove the reinforcement. So we put the chain on the top of the reinforcement to pull it out and roll it back over so that I can get the bolts out of the reinforcement. The holes in the back of the reinforcement go all the way through and it bolts into the rail. When everything's misaligned, we can't exactly get a socket and an extension all the way through there to get to the bolt. So we pulled it out a little bit. We're able to get a wrench in there and loosen it up. And we can get a socket and an extension in there and finish taking off our bolts. The other side was torn off enough that I can just pull it off. Now we'll pull on what's left of the reinforcement. We're just trying to, well at this point, tear it open so that we can get to the bolts inside. And we're gonna learn why you don't stand behind a ram with tension on it. And now we made ourselves a little room and get to those bolts, unbolt it from the frame rail. Pry this little piece out of the way. And now we can get to that last bolt to get the rest of our reinforcement. And toss that in the pile. And now we put a pulling plate through the bolt holes where our reinforcement was, and we can start pulling on our rail. It's a little bit safer this way, but we're gonna find the next weakest link if we keep pulling. So we're gonna pull and see how far we can go. And as we pull, we're gonna stress relieve. Makes it a little easier as we're hitting it it actually comes out a little bit. Then we can put a little more pressure on it, keep working it with our stress relieving, and that's how you get the rail out. If you just tried to pull it all the way out, we'd snap those bolts off and send them across the shop. There's a better angle of what we're trying to do. And we're getting to the end of the strength of those bolts. And we still have quite a kink in our rail. We're gonna have to redirect our efforts even our stress relieving isn't moving much anymore. That rail's pretty tough. It's not even high strength steel. So we're just gonna go do something else. There's a conveniently located hole in the quarter. So we put a little bracket on the inside. We're just gonna pull the body panel and quarter out to get this big buckle out of it. We're gonna cut this off anyway, but I still wanna get it straight. We're opening up the gap in the door now. Pet it, let it know we mean it no harm. Then we can start knocking out some of these buckles in the quarter from the inside. We're just trying to get it close. We don't want to get it too good or I'm going to want to save this quarter and make it out of Bondo. Well, not me, but the bodywork no one's well. So our little hammer isn't moving anything. Maybe it's time to get the bigger hammer. Experts will say that I'm using the wrong hammer. So this one moves the metal a little quicker. We're just trying to get it close. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're cutting it all off anyway, but we need to move all the panels that are attached to it. And now that I've accepted that's as far as it's going to go, we'll just release the pressure in the chains and start doing something else. We're going to pull this trunk gasket off. It's got the Lexus Emporium, doesn't have an extra, so I don't want to destroy it. I'm just going to throw it in the pile of stuff to go back on the car and then just deal with all the gooey fun stuff that Toyota puts on there. 
pull our wiring harness off for our antenna, unplug it, push the grommet out and stuff it back through the body panel. That's the antenna for the keyless entry, in case you're wondering what kind of antenna they would hide under the bumper. Now we can unbolt our radio amp, which hopefully is still good. These go bad when you don't hit them with another car, so it's questionable as if this one's going to be any good. Pull our wiring harness out of there, give ourselves a little more slack. And then we'll unplug it, go put it somewhere safe because around me is probably not a safe place to be. We're gonna need this module and all the harnesses out of the way later anyway for the painting gnomes to do their job. So it's easier just to take it out of everyone's way right at the beginning. Now we can unbolt the bracket that our bumper clips into on our quarter. There's a buckle right up above it, so it's gonna be in our way. Just pull the screws out, and there's a little plastic clip that expands in the one. And you can see our buckle we're trying to get to. So that bracket would have been in our way. We'll put a little pull on our quarter, the rear body panel. Once it's got a little tension on it, we can just hammer it, get that buckle out of there. Take our time, and hopefully we'll make our bodywork gnome's life a little bit easier. Is it okay that I'm using a body hammer on the body tool experts? If it's not, I'm gonna do it anyway. So now we got a big clamp. It's not really a clamp, it's more of like a hook. We're just gonna pull out our body panel. We'll hammer it flat so that we can cut it off later. But as we do this, we're also pulling our quarter out a little bit and anything that's attached to our body panel. We'll unbolt our tail light, pry it out of its little clip. Toss that in the pile. I don't think there's any fix in that. And now we can pull our quarter up. When it gets hit in the center, it pulls everything down. Even though we pulled the center out, it doesn't push the quarter back up. So we need to put a little pressure on it to pull it back out, get the buckles out of the top of our quarter. Remember the buckles out. We're not worried about the quarter panel itself, we're worried about everything underneath. It's easier to do this now then try to straighten it out when our quarter doesn't fit later. You learn that the hard way. So for everyone telling me I'm doing work I don't need to do, you got a lot to learn. And we'll hammer our outer quarter a little more. Get some more of those kinks out of there. I'm telling you, it's getting pretty close to where we can save it. Now it only needs four gallons of Bondo. We'll give it a little bit more. More hits on the inside. And now we're gonna pull our tire off. We need to get our wheel ladder out and see what our wheelhouse looks like. I did find the wheel lock key. It was in the glove compartment. I always enjoy the customers that like to keep them at home because you always have a flat tire in your garage, never out on the road. So at least it's safe there when you won't lose it. Then we can pull our bumper bracket off the bottom of our quarter here. Then we can pull all the nuts off that hold the wheel liner into our wheel house. Quite a few of them in there. I wanted to make sure this liner wasn't going anywhere. If you're wondering, it's carpeted. Which is acceptable on a sedan that's never gonna go off-roading. Not on a pickup truck. I'm looking at you, GM. So we can put a little pull on our package shelf here. We just have it clamped on where the trunk gasket goes, and we're gonna pull on it. Fortunately, it's not coming out at all. So it's either really strong or we have some other problem. Try stress relieving it, it's not moving. I think we found our other problem. It seems our RAM has given up the fight. Apparently these things are only good for like 40 years and a few million pulls. They don't make them like they used to. So since we can't pull anymore, we'll find something else to do. We'll take the little strut off of our trunk hinge here. Try not to lose the clip. 
and it's binding up a little bit. It's definitely bent. Luckily, Scott's Lexus Emporium happens to have a few hinges in stock. So we'll unbolt them. There's two 10 millimeters that bolt the hinge to the package shelf, and then one 14 that goes through the seat belt and into the hinge. We'll slide our new one in there. It's not painted yet, but we don't care about that. We just want to make sure that we get it in there, get everything lined up, and we can take it all back apart and hand it over to the painting gnomes later. We'll start all our bolts. And tighten it down. Manufacturer specs, of course. We have multiple electronic torque wrenches. And the hinge is no longer scraping on the package shelf, so we accomplished something. So while we're waiting for the parts to repair our frame rack, uh, I went over to Scott's Lexus Emporium and picked up some of our parts. Cut the rail off of here, um, a little piece of the floor. This is all one piece factory locations. And you can see why I drive so far to pick up the cars I do. This is an Illinois car, a lot rustier than our Texas car. So I have to clean up a little bit of rust and see what size these are because they're not 17 anymore. Maybe 15.5 millimeter. So we'll heat those up and take them out of there and throw them away. I also cut the rear body panel and the quarter off. I'm going to try to save the floor because our floor on our other one kind of looks like this. And if I can straighten out those wrinkles, I'd much rather use a nice, clean, rust-free floor that has a couple of wrinkles straightened out. It's not really structural, so it's not going to matter. It just holds a spare tire up there. I think we hammer out some wrinkles, it'll be just fine. For all the YouTube experts that tell me it'll never be the same. Maybe not, but it's still going to hold the tire in. And it's going to act the same in a crash anyway, so yeah, I'm going to straighten it. Because if I replaced it with rusty parts, it would probably be less safe. It would definitely not have the same structural rigidity. So let's clean up our piece. Uh, I trimmed off the end of the frame rail, so we got to do some drilling for some more spot welds so it'll sleeve our piece together when we can finally finish pulling it. Let's get that done. Southerners, look away. This rust content will be far too traumatizing for you guys to handle. For everyone else, you know how this goes. We pound on a socket that's slightly smaller than the bolt was supposed to be and see if we can get it loose. Or at least knock some of the rust out of our way. And knocking the rust out of the way is really all we've accomplished so far. So we'll hammer the socket on a couple more of our bolts and try the same thing. We want to make sure that the socket fits right over it because we're going to have to heat them up and we don't want it to cool down. So it's easier to heat it up and then put the socket on and be able to get it right off of there instead of trying to hammer the socket off as it's cooling. Also snap on, don't watch this when I warranty this socket next week. Now we'll put a little heat on there. It shouldn't take much. The inside of these bolts are actually in pretty good shape. It's just the heads of them that are exposed to the salt that got eaten away. We'll heat them up just enough to loosen up that rust Loctite. And then we'll hit them with our impact. They should come right out. Now the next challenge is getting the bolt back out of our socket. First we'll try running it back in and see if that breaks it free. In the socket, and it did. Then we'll see if you run it back out. Then we can go on to the next one. Heat up that nut on the inside a little bit. Spin it off of there. Spin this nut on there straight. The second method is to drop it on the ground a few times, and that didn't work, so now we'll just tap the side of the socket until the bolt falls out of it. Then we're off to do our last one. Heat up the nut on the inside. See if we can get three for three without breaking anything in there. We did. Now we have to remove the rest of the bracket. Done. Now we can remove the nuts. I think they're nuts that used to be at one time. Uh, this used to hold our heat shield that goes above the muffler between the floor. So we'll just Pound our socket on there with our ratcheting hammer, quarter inch ratcheting hammer. We don't want to use the wrong hammer for this. And we'll slowly take it off of there. They're aluminum, the studs are steel, so hopefully if anything breaks, it's going to be the nut itself. We'll do that for each one. 
And then we saved all of our studs. So we drilled out all of our spot welds all the way around, or so I think. Let's see if we can knock this loose. We'll just hammer our breaker in there. Yes, the makeshift breaker, even though the other one is literally sitting right on the part I'm using. We'll switch over to it though. I win. So we got our new ram. The seals were gonna take way longer than just getting a whole ram, so that's what we did. And the other one was 40 years old, so eh, it was questionable if it was gonna be any good. So now we can do a little bit more pulling. Moved our clamp down to the bottom. I need to get the bottom of the rail pulled out to get that kink out of the bottom. Uh, just to really mess with the YouTube experts that tell me you shouldn't be straightening anything. And then I'm gonna cut it all off just to really, yeah. So let's get all that done and then we can measure it all up. See how close we got. So our plate is actually bolted to the bottom of the frame rail using the three bolts I just took out of the other frame rail. The tow hook on there is just a safety in case those three bolts give up the fight and launches this thing across the shop. The ram isn't going to come out, it's going to grab onto that other chain that has a little more slack in it, but not enough to let the ram come all the way out. I don't want to break the brain. So we got a lot more tension on it than we were able to get on it before since our cylinder was leaking, so we can actually get our kinks all the way out of here. This is some pretty tough stuff. So we're just going to keep pulling and stress relieving until we get this rail back where it belongs, or at least in the neighborhood. So that's what our pulling setup looked like. We released the pressure off of it. I think we got the rail about where it belongs. We need to get a better look at what I'm pulling on here. I can only get two bolts in there that are holding line up. Apparently it was enough. So now we have our measuring system under here. And we're a little bit off. Our distance front to back is almost right on. Side to side is a little off because the back of the car is pulled around towards the driver's side. Left rail is a little bit worse. Our gap is a little bit better, but I think if we pull it over to where those bolts line up, our gap will be perfect. At least I hope. And this gap opened up quite a bit. Much better than the overlapping door we had before. Now we're just going to pull it straight to the side. We bolted it where the reinforcement bolts go. We're going to pull the passenger side first. It's going to pull the driver's side just a little bit, but not too much. There's not a whole lot of strength in that rear body panel to bring it with. So we don't have to worry about what's happening on the left side while we're moving the right side. We'll do one side at a time. And if it does move, it'll be a tiny bit. It'll be okay. We can always pull it back with a port of power if we have to. Since everything is still connected and there is a brace across the floor, we are going to stress relieve the other side just in case there's any tension left in there. We want to get it out of there. We don't want it moving later on. A little bit further, then we can release it. See how close we got with our guesstimate here. Make sure our, our gauges didn't move at all. They do when you pull the car a little bit, so we'll recenter those. Then we'll see how close we guessed. I mean, pulled it. We're dead on. Must have been an accident. So now we're going to pull the driver's side over a little bit. Okay, it's going to go a little bit more than the other side because it's further over. Stress relieve that side. And we'll check it. And we got it right where it belongs. Another good guess. Man, I'm getting lucky today. So now we don't need our rear body panel in the way anymore. We're going to cut it out of here. I left it in there because when you're moving the two rails together, it moves the floor, and the floor is very flimsy, so it gives a little more strength. Now that we're done moving our floor around, we can cut this thing out of here. This is the fun part, when we really start filling up the pile. In the pile. So that's the end of our rough cuts. Actually, they're probably more like smooth cuts since I always use those dull saw blades. So now we're going to grind out all the spot welds on our body panel. We're going to use our die grinder just to annoy all the belt sanding experts or advocates. I think they get sponsored by the belt sanding companies. We'll cut the rest of this out of here. And hopefully not through the floor. We got a welder, doesn't matter. One last little piece. Now we're just going to fold this over. I'm still going to leave it on the floor in case I need to step on there or something. Now we can start drilling out our spot welds to hold that trunk floor into our rail. And 
And now we're going to cut off the back of our quarter pen so that we do have to replace it and don't just end up using our four gallons of Bondo. This is looking pretty straight though. Maybe we could use some bricks and mortar or even ramen noodles for more weight saving. They conveniently placed that bent hole at the bottom so we could switch directions with our saw. And we'll cut the rest of it out. This would go a lot faster if I use those saw blades with teeth. But I'm poor. Then we're going to cut right through our rail in the back half. We're done pulling on it. Everything lines up. We don't need it anymore. We didn't cut it before because we needed what was in the back of it to pull on. Those rails are pretty strong so the clamps don't hold on quite as tight as we need them to. We got a couple spot welds that we didn't quite drill out all the way so we're going to knock those loose. Of course we're going to use the body hammer just to annoy the tool experts. And we missed a spot weld, so we're going to have to get that one. Well, just a little bit of wiggling and should break that spot weld off. And you know we do with this. Wow. And that's what our floor looks like. I did right on there. And no ut. I guess that's supposed to be a C. I just didn't want to cut that, get all excited, and then cut the piece that's inside. So I gave myself a little warning. Now we're gonna pull this floor out that's got that buckle in it and get straight on it. Just put a clamp on it, hold a little tension, hammer and dolly it out. It should be nice and flat when we're done. Is it okay if I use a body hammer for this? Tool experts? Maybe I should get the brake job hammer. Give them something to complain about. So we hammered most of it out, pretty flat. We can do some more later, that rail's out of the way. Now we got our favorite tool. We're gonna cut the quarter skin off to get it out of our way. We'll push our luck and go towards the door. And if we mess up, it just gives the bodywork gnome a little job security. Try not to cut through the panel underneath. We always have duct tape if we do. We gotta pull our gas cap off of there. We're not tossing that in the pile. We're gonna need that gas door. Not in the pile. And now we can grind off the spot welds on the rest of this quarter panel. Our way towards the bottom. Now we're gonna cut the front. We'll take this little piece of quarter out of here. Over the wheel arch, there are no spot welds, just glued on. I believe the structural seam sealer is all holding it on now. Got our seam sealer breaker here. And we're saving the inner wheelhouse, so now we're going to hammer and dolly it out just to get that little kink that was in there back out of it. Take our time, get it straight, a lot easier than replacing it. Not gonna hurt anything. Now we can start grinding the spot welds off of our rail here. We don't wanna drill it out because we don't wanna mess up the piece that's inside. The one that I put my little warning on, but I didn't spell right. Now we're gonna take our air chisel and press our luck. Just gonna kinda peel this thing open like a banana. That way we can get to all of our spot welds. Trying to get it off in one piece is just going to be too difficult. Just one more spot weld, so we'll grind that out. And then we'll pry this piece up and hopefully it pops off of there. But now we can get our breaker in there. Hammer it in. That's as far as we can go. Uh, we'll try and get our breaker out of there. Bend this piece over to the side. And our breaker likes it in there. I wonder why they never have any handles on. 
Probably because they're not made for this. Oh well. If it works, it's the right tool. Let me back my breaker. So now we're going on a rescue mission. Our favorite tool saved our breaker. And since it's in our hand, we're just going to use that to knock the rest of these spot welds off. Or cut the frame around, whichever happens first. All that sharp metal and still no gloves. Are your hands bleeding yet, safety experts? Mine aren't. Toss that one in the pile. In the pile. And now we gotta go inside the wheel well. We're gonna break this brake line loose. It's gonna be on our way. Let's crack it loose, and then we can spin it off with our hands. Something you could not do on an Illinois car. A little bit of sand in there. I'll take sand any day over rust. And then we're going to cap it off so we don't get any debris in there. We'll cap off both sides, the hose and the line. You can find a cap that fits anyway. Then I can pull out the little clip that holds the brake hose into the bracket. We're just going to use our clip remover here. I believe it's a 10 millimeter. Same one that we used to take the line loose. Put our little cap in the brake hose. Make sure it's in there good so it doesn't fall out. We don't want any sparks getting in there. Any metal shavings, anything that's going to mess up our caliper. Then we'll kind of tuck it back underneath the drive axle. And we get to all our spot welds here, the ones that were behind the brake hose. We bend that brake line down a little bit. We can do that because it's not all routed out. And we'll cut the rest of our frame rail out back here. So that we're working with smaller pieces. And because I like using saws on. A reciprocating saw for the tool experts. Now we can knock that piece loose. Again, held in with seam sealer. Their budget on the seam sealer for this car was that of the newer S55 Mustangs. Now the rest of our rail is all by itself here, so we'll just wiggle it off. And we're done. So our new parts are all ready. We're gonna prep them with a little weld through primer. We cleaned all the rust, metal, and paint off of our weld areas, mostly rust. So we'll put our weld through primer just on the bare metal surfaces that are gonna be up against other bare metal surfaces. Now we'll do the car side. Sure you get the bottom. It's actually the most important part and the easily forgotten part. So that's about as far as we're gonna go today. We got everything all pulled and squared according to the measuring system. It's all right where it belongs. Of course, we haven't put this rail in yet to find out the bad news. So we'll save that for next time. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.